Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, you see we've made a bit of an improvement here. Well, could be an improvement. Some people might not, not think it's an improvement. You can see my face. We're moving on in terms of technology. So yeah, we'll not bang on about that. Purpose of the video is Brendan's back. So um, we're having a look at, at Celtic. So a team close to my own heart. Um, so what we're going to do is go through the different players, have a quick chat, preview um, about the new season. First thing to point out here, obviously you can see on screen, coach Angelos Postacoglu. It's not Angelos Postacoglu anymore. So Brendan has arrived. So obviously we've got a summer transfer window here and we're going to look ahead and see how this might affect the players that we've got. Um, first thing I'm going to do is have a wee look at Celtic section on Soria data. So this is obviously quite interesting to see over the course of um, the recent averages, etc. Who have been the highest scoring players. So not many surprises, obviously, here. Top SO5 averages, Carter Vickers, Jota, or Joe Felipe as he's known, Alistair Johnson, Greg Taylor, Starfelt, and Aaron Moy appears there as well. That's quite interesting. Come back to Aaron Moy later on. All around averages. So for anyone who's a bit newer, all around means the general scoring. Um, so for example, if you get goals and assists, they're known as decisives. And all around averages are your, your other scoring points. So for defenders, it's like duels, one um, passes into the opposition. Third, for strikers, it can be things like shots on target, etc. Top net decisive actions. So obviously you Furuhashi, Jota, etc. There, Matt O'Reilly appears with um, Hatati. Um, so that's that's net decisive actions in connection with you know things like goals and assists, etc. Minutes played. Um, obviously guys like Starfelt, McGregor, Joe Hart, Taylor, etc. Goal scorers, top assists. And then we've got things here like penalty kicks, which obviously have been shared around. And interesting one, corner kick takers. Um, quite an important thing, actually. And, um, quite, an, quite an important thing, connection with so rare, um set piece takers and corner kick takers. So obviously that improves your chances of getting um, assists. Um, so Matt Riley is the most um, popular one here. Um, Aaron Moy was taking a good number of them, but we'll, we'll come back to him in terms of his current situation. Um, and obviously David Turnbull used to take them as well. Jota sometimes um, takes them, but that's mainly when O'Reilly's not playing. Um, again, relevance to, to scoring. So obviously if you're on um, platforms like FPL, you just want goals, assists, clean sheets, minutes played. Um, but but in so rare, um, you, you get points for things like attempted assists. So Riley cross the ball over, somebody headers it, um, doesn't go in, then you're, um, you're getting three points. The other thing that's happening here is, I don't know why, but my camera keeps freezing. So there we go. You can see, guys, why we've not actually <laughs> had many shows before with um, the camera on it. So I'm going to keep recording this and hopefully it sorts itself out. But, um, yeah, we are trying. Anyways, we are trying to make the, the videos a bit more professional, but with my own limited <laughs> expertise in this, um, yeah, doesn't always work. But I don't know why it's not working. That's the problem. It just keeps freezing. So... We're going to focus on the content, and if my mugshot has frozen on the screen, then I apologise. The other option is we just don't put me in the screen at all, which is probably what's going to happen with the next video. So on to the players. Um, what I want to do is have a wee preview as to what we think is going to happen for next season, go over the different positions, etc. here as well. Yeah, so I don't know what's up with the camera. It doesn't, doesn't appear to be working at all, so hopefully... It will come off the screen now, but if not, you can just see the freeze frame. So yeah, we're, we're going to be looking at um, the squad, going through different positions here, um, and have a chat about the risks of what's happening over the summer. So first position to look at 
register goalkeepers at the moment. Connor Hazard, Benjamin Segrist, um, Joe Hart and Scott Bain. Um, Scott Bain's on a, a sort of long-term contract again. He's really a, a backup player, so you'll hear people having a laugh and referring to the Bain rule, but he's obviously a homegrown player and one of these guys you, you probably need for things like Champions League squads, etc. So he, he's not really in the picture. Connor Hazard was out in loan before. Um, I'm not sure whether he might be out of contract, actually. So I think he may well be. He's a good age, 25, and you know maybe he'll get a move on. The only issue is, if he does get a move, does he get a move to the English Championship or another um, club in Scotland? Or does he get a move maybe to a lower level of football that so rare don't score, like League One in England or um, a European league that's not covered? I think the main... Um, chat here um, is just surrounding um, Benji Sigrist and Joe Hart. So um, Sigrist has actually so been injured at points this season and obviously Joe Hart has been the undisputed number one. Having a look at his, his SO5 scores, obviously first thing to point out is that he's still getting a number of clean sheets, but when he doesn't get a clean sheet, then scores are pretty poor. Um, this has been a wee bit of an issue this season because we've been Celtic have been leaking goals here and there, and that's really not desirable. Obviously, if, if you're running sort of defensive players as well, also for Celtic, Carter Vickers and Starfelt etc. Johnson Taylor, they all score pretty well, so you probably want to put the goalkeeper with them as well in terms of a, a defensive stack. So yeah, the, the scoring is not terrible, but. Um, we've been leaking too many goals. Obviously, see here these games at sixteens and things. That's not desirable. And at the end of the day, thirties and forties probably not going to win you much these days as well. Um, if you look at all of his scoring, um, you'll see in the past you've had more clusters of of good scores. And obviously, these scores are seventy, etc. People say, "Well, that doesn't really win you much." But if you're getting that 71, 76, and the defenders are getting a clean sheet, then obviously you're getting the, the clean sheet 25 points decisive, and then you're getting 10 points added on to each defender for clean sheets, plus their general all-around scoring, which Celtic are, are pretty good at. Um, coming back to the squad list, so in connection with this, this might be an area that, that Celtic have to address at some point. Joe Hart's under contract until the end of this season coming, so one year left. And obviously, with Rogers coming in, um, talk is he's got quite a good transfer budget um, to work with. Celtic are in the Champions League. So, with has been in the Champions League, the money for that's guaranteed. And over and above that, the remit, obviously, is to, to try and move things forward. So, whether Rogers just sticks with Hart for this season, um, I don't know. Obviously, we'll need to wait and see when he comes in. Benji Sigrist is a capable goalkeeper as well. He's only 31. He came as a free transfer from Dundee United, and he's a goalkeeper I like as well. So with having a change of manager, there's also the potential for a change in the goalkeeper position. So we'll just need to wait and see on that. We'll maybe do an update on this again later on in the summer once we see what the transfers are, or once we get to the stage where we maybe get some pre-season games. Turning now to the, the defenders. So... Obviously, Alistair Johnson was a um, an arrival uh, more recently. Um, he arrived from Montreal, I think. Um, he's now 24, so was available for the under-23s, but it's now timing out. Um, Kobayashi um, is a defender who signed from Japan from Vissel Kobe, so Ange signed him in a free transfer. Austin Lawal is a young guy. Um, not seen a lot of him, but doesn't really look overly capable to me. Bernabeu was a, a signing from Argentina. Um, cost a few million, but has been pretty much a backup to Greg Taylor. Carter Vickers and Starfelt have been the first choice centre-backs, and obviously we had a look earlier at their averages. Anthony Ralston has been rotated with Alistair Johnson. He's had some injury problems recently. Um, Stephen Welsh Played a lot for Scotland under-21s, never really got a look in under Ange and Greg Taylor, obviously, there as well. So 
to come back up and go through things here, Alistair Johnson looks really good, to be honest. If you, you look at Johnson's SO5 scores, obviously they've been pretty solid with Celtic as well. Um, average around about 54, but if you click on the all tab, some of his previous scores were at um, his previous club with Montreal. So you can flick through in Sorare data if you have access to this and you can see, obviously, game week 3-1-6, he was still playing with Montreal and then he was playing with Canada. So, so yeah, <clears throat> some of these scores you see on the left-hand side here um, are with his previous club. Um, so if we filter that down, for example, and just have a look at his last 15, you'll see at Celtic scoring is very good. Um, very solid player. Really fitted in pretty well. A really a really good character as well. Um, Kobayashi hasn't really played very much. Just come in as a backup. To be honest, I think he's a guy who Celtic might move on. He might go back to, to Japan. I just don't think he's ready to come in and replace Starfelt and Carter Vickers at the moment. So if um, Rogers has a transfer budget, which is seems likely he'll have money to spend, I think bringing in another centre half for some competition to, to Vickers and Starfelt would be really an area you would want to, to look to improve. Um, okay, Vickers and Starfelt have got a great domestic record together and over the last two years, they haven't lost a domestic game that they've started together. But you do get injuries, you do get some rotation that's needed because of all the different games. Celtic are in the Champions League. They go far in cups, play a lot of games, pick up injuries, etc. So I think that's an area Celtic might look to strengthen. Boston Lowell's the young guy and I don't think he's ready to come in and fill that sort of void. Um, Bernabai, um, so he's an interesting one. Um, what we'll do actually, we'll go down to Ralston next because we're still talking about the right back. So the other um, position here um, worth considering is, is Anthony Ralston. Um, he is um, obviously the other person who is given some competition to um, Alistair Johnson there. Um, you'll see, obviously, he has been coming in and playing his cover, so we have spells where he'll come in, and, and generally he does score um, reasonably well too, but his form's been a bit sketchy, so when Johnson was injured, he made a mistake against St Mirren, he conceded a penalty against Hibernian. Now these games actually were, weren't games that mattered for winning the league, etc., but still not um, very good form. Um, he is generally suitable to the Matrix, and he has put up some good scores um, in the past as well, but you know, a guy who's more of a backup um, rather than a, a first choice starter. So again, could that be an area Celtic look to strengthen? It depends, obviously, if Ralston moves on. Um, but I think Johnson is one we'll really want to keep. The the main guys, obviously, in connection with the defence at the moment are Carter Vickers and Starfield. Um, we've seen their um, sort of scores earlier, but um, we'll have another look in terms of their, their SO5 scores. So this is, this is where, obviously, it's pretty interesting. So this is Carter Vickers first. Um, pretty interesting what will or won't change when Rodgers comes in. So Ange really liked to play quite a high line where basically the, the defenders were all quite pushed up um, so playing in a kind of advanced positions. Rogers historically has favoured a more possession based type of game, so I don't know whether play with the same sort of high line. Um but I think Rogers will be in terms of style of play not that dissimilar to Ange and really um domestically at least Celtic should should still continue, I think, to to dominate. Um so Vickers obviously have had a quick look at Car Starfelt um again scores very well. Um you know, look at these scores, a couple of a hundreds. Obviously he's had some DMPs, he's just picked up some injuries, but um if you look at his overall scoring at Celtic, the scores are obviously really high quite consistently in the, the sort of green 
numbers and things as well. Um, what would be the issues then with Starfelt and Vickers? Well, they're both right-footed, and the issue is that Starfelt always traditionally plays on the left-hand side, which means that when the ball's been played out, he looks a bit more uncomfortable on the ball. So they're both strong defenders. They're both quite good at winning duels. They're both good at racking up points and so there. But could be an area where Rodgers looks to bring in maybe another left-sided centre-back to either give competition to Starfelt and Vickers or um, maybe to play. Depends how much he wants to spend on that area. But um, personally, I, I think that they're, they're good enough, certainly, for domestic level. But if the remit is to improve Celtic in connection with um, Champions League, or European football, it might be an area that, that has to be to be looked at. Um, so don't be blinded by the, the high Sorer um scores all the time. At the end of the day, you know, these things obviously through time can can change. Um moving on to um Greg Taylor and Bernabe, so on the left back position. Um obviously Greg Taylor has really nailed this position down. Um bernabai has been coming in on rotation. Um, we discussed this on the, the Celts Are Here um, podcast as well, so give that a like and a subscribe and a follow. It's myself, Quinny, um, Sean and Mark um, from the Odyssey Voice. Um, but Rogers probably will rotate slightly less than Ange, so we'll, we'll see pretty quickly, I think, what, what his best or what our best or favoured type team is. So... Greg Taylor, good average. Um, you see he's hitting some high scores. He's hitting some lower down scores as well, so he's maybe slightly less consistent than the centre halves. That's that's pretty normal for full backs as well, given that the centre halves obviously control possession. The ball's played out to the full backs. Maybe the full backs are then having to go and beat someone or go into midfield or, you know, um, maybe they'll give the ball away, maybe they're digging down the line, they'll lose possession, etc. So it's not a, an unfamiliar um, profile for fullbacks. I re- personally, I really like Greg Taylor, um, and I think he is good enough. I think he's improved, but obviously the new manager will have to come in and, and make that decision. So that that sums up the, the defence. Um, maybe an area that Rogers might look at, um, Hart is a natural position that will have to be sorted out at some point. He's out of contract at the end of the season, so um, we'll need to see whether or not Rogers likes his influence in the dressing room or whether or not he sees that he wants to build someone younger in um, or maybe he wants to try Segrist. Um, Hart would be the favourite to start the season as a goalkeeper just now, but we'll have to go through the transfer window as well. Um, moving on now to the midfield. Um, so, first guy to point out here is Ben Summers. Ben Summers is an academy guy. He's only appeared on the bench a few times. He was academy player of the season, so he is a guy some people might want to pick up for collections. Um, why would you want to pick him up for collections? Well, Ben Summers is a rookie card, and... Obviously, if you pick that up, it scores a wee bit extra in terms of the general collection score. So going into collections and things, it's a completely separate video, but obviously um, he might be one you want to buy for the future. I don't think he'll play in the team soon, um, but could be a good long-term buy. Um, Tomoki Awata is a real interesting one because obviously he was bought by Ange, but he was the, the MVP in Japan. Um, he's a real defensive player, so let's have a look at his sort of scores. And he only really started to get some chances at the end of the season as well. Um, so in terms of SO5 scoring, a lot of kind of average scores, um, some substitute appearances as well, um, and sometimes playing some games at centre-back rather than in midfield. So one thing to look out for here is that Awata has midfield cards and he has old defender cards and realistically the defender cards are probably better but he's been minted as a mid just now. There's already talk of Rogers want to sign guys like Ndidi and um, Mendy from Leicester. I think that's just links with 
his previous club. But Iwata could really suit um, the way Rodgers plays. So with the possession um, type football, he likes to play with a defensive mid. If Iwata gets that position, he could score really strongly for Celtic. Um, Aaron Moy is an interesting one. Um, he was really good after the World Cup. So if you look at one point, he was actually keeping Matt O'Reilly out of the team. Um, so he did a really good spell. You see here, 73, 96, 64, 85, 81, 86. He was taking set pieces and penalties. The problem is he is getting on a bit now and his contract thing was up this season with an option of an extension. Towards the end of last season, um, he was struggling with injury and there's a few rumours of whether or not actually he'll come back. So if you're buying someone like Moy or you hold them, you've got to proceed with some caution. I think he might be a guy that doesn't come back to Celtic next season, depending on his injury status, etc. He does well with the ability that he has and you know he certainly contributed a lot at certain points to Celtic, but I think he's struggling there a bit with injury and fitness. Rocco Vata. Um, Rocco is um, a rated talent. Um, again, another guy who um, is a rookie card. So again, if you're buying him, um, one to hold, one to help your collections, etc. as well. He is a, a, a well-rated talent at Parkhead. He's already made some substitute appearances, etc. It looks like quite an exciting player, but not really somebody who's probably going to force their way into the team at the moment. Maybe a loan, etc. would be needed for him. Um, Matt O'Reilly is the next guy up, and obviously a guy close to my own heart after um, his performance um, at the end of the season, etc. And... Um, if anyone doesn't know, I hold his unique card, so I've obviously got a lot of confidence in him. Um, if you look at Matt's SO5 scores, um, he did have spells here where Moy was, was taking some of the game time, etc. here, but when he plays, he tends to um, take the set pieces, tends to get a good number of assists, so he's not been scoring many goals, but he sees 12 assists, even with um, some reductions in game time, and he's He's average 80 or all around is 14. So more recently, he has cemented the place. And if you look at his recent scores, they are pretty good. Um, you'd like to see him putting in a couple more sort of peak scores there. But obviously, um, those are based on the circumstances of the games. Celtic also in the last six games play against the, the last five games play against top six. So... These games don't always include some of the the lesser liked teams in Scotland. I was going to call them daddy teams there, but I better not. <laughs> the, the teams who aren't as good as the top six. Um, but yeah, Matt O'Reilly is an interesting one. Um, hope he really hope he stays. I think there's been some interest in him um, from some of the other sort of leagues abroad. He's in the Denmark squad and everything now as well. He's still under twenty threes next season. People really like him, and if, obviously, um, if he stays, then he'll, he'll be an important card, I think, for Celtic. I don't have any real doubt that he, he will stay, but there's loads of links, obviously, regarding um, a lot of players. Rio Hitati. So, Rio is a, an interesting player. Um, he has been excellent, obviously, for Celtic. Um which doesn't always translate into his SO5 scores, but of late his SO5 scores have improved as well. So you see a way back, you know, game week 300, etc., you know, doing 30s, etc., but then his form's really improved again, and you'll see a lot of high peak scores and everything here. Hatati's a really important player for Celtic. Um, he came to Celtic, obviously, Ange bought him. He didn't have many years under his belt in connection with professional football now he's in the Japan squad etc and yeah it's a it's an interesting one but if Celtic are um fending off interest from clubs I would be surprised if there's not some some clubs interested in Hitati. He came from the same team as Matoma um and I think he is capable of taking the step up but it's gonna take a good 
a real good bid to move him. James McCarthy, no idea why Celtic signed him. <laughs> signed a long-term deal and a free, pretty bad recruitment. There's been some links with MLS clubs, etc. If he can stay fit, would be a decent option maybe for one of those leagues, but he's not a player to buy if you want to play him at Celtic. David Turnbull is a real interesting one. This guy was such a high score, uh, high scorer and also such a high price when Celtic came on the platform. So if you look at his SO5 scores, um, you filter all the way back as far as you can go back, you'll see he's got this insane spell where he's doing hundreds, nineties, hundreds, one of the highest scoring under 23s players. Even when he's been playing later on, he's been doing some nice scores as well, but really not favoured by Ange at all. Um, could a change of manager help him? It could. Um, whether or not Rodgers will see him as fitting in with his system, I don't know. He clearly is a player who has a lot of talent, but in a team where you have to press, you have to show some high energy and you have to do more than just some of the nice stuff, um, He's not really been picked a lot and Ange really hardly ever started him at all. So he may be one that could move on if he gets a good team, say, in the English Championship, etc. He could be a, an excellent card for next season, especially if he's on set pieces, etc. But whether or not he gets back in at Celtic, I really I don't know. Um, doubtful. Kwasi Abui um, is out on loan. Not really a guy um, worth picking up. Never really done anything at Celtic. Callum McGregor, obviously quite a high-profile one, doing very well, very consistent captain, plays all the games, etc. Plays for Scotland, um, hugely important player. He is a real interesting one because, obviously, Cal Mack is, is very consistent. You'll see he puts in loads of consistent green scores. Um, he's a couple of higher scores recently, but he's a guy who played a bit further forward under Rodgers the last time, so he was there, played further forward and also was getting goals and assists. So if Rodgers brings in an our defensive midfielder, plays a lot, that could release him. Um, so an interesting one, but the club captain, pretty stable position. James Forrest, again, is an interesting one, club legend, um, not really been playing much, um, more of a backup player these days, but again, a guy who actually did really well under Brendan Rodgers and who Brendan Rodgers really liked and, and really moved forward um, at that point. So, you know, he's not really done much in recent seasons, always been more of a, a backup type player, but an interesting one. Um, obviously, age is against him now, so I think Rodgers will, will look to move on from that, but Horace might be there as a squad player still just to... Um, just to provide some backup and some experience and, you know, that homegrown status and continuity in the squad. Um, so went through the midfielders. I um, think the main risk in terms of people moving on there would probably be the guys like Hatate and Matt O'Reilly, I don't think is a huge risk, but there has been interest in them. And they're a nice profile of young players who are improving and good at football. Um, and, you know, I would be surprised if those teams not looking at them, but I think that Rodgers will want to keep the best players together. Moving on now to the forward line, first guy to look at here has got to be Furuhashi. Now, obviously, Kyogo has been absolutely superb. Um, I'm going to have a wee look on site. Let's have a look at these nice graphs on site. Um, very consistent player in connection with scoring. Um, doesn't do a lot of high scores because he's not involved in the game as much but 27 goals and 2 assists this season which is, is excellent obviously um, he might be a guy Celtic might have to fend off some interest in, I don't know there was some rumours of him going to Tottenham but I don't really think he's anywhere near the same level as replacing Harry Kane at Tottenham really don't think so at all and I really hope Celtic keep him. I don't think Rodgers will want to move him on, but he only has two years left in his contract and obviously if he has a resale value Celtic will have to consider that if whether or not he extends his contract or whether um, he's happy to 
to stay or whether he just wants to take this chance to get a big move himself, connection with playing in a, another league or going for more money that another club might be able, be able to offer him. Coming back to the other forward players, um, obviously this is a position where Celtic are pretty strong as well. Scored on average three goals per game in domestically last season. Um, Jota obviously is a really important player for Celtic. Um, unfortunately lost his under-23 status, but still a pretty play- price to, to buy on, so rare, but for good reason. The difference between Jota and Furuhashi is Jota has got 13 goals and 11 assists, but also he does have an average AA of 15, so he's getting all-around scores from things like duels won, dribbles, being involved in the play, key passes, all that type of stuff. Um, you'll see he's got lots of peak scores, like hundreds, etc. And if you go to his overall all scores, including the season before, you'll see bangs in loads and loads and loads of really good scores. So again, hugely loved by everyone at Celtic. A really, really um, skillful top young player. Good personality. I don't think Rodgers will want to move him on. I think Rodgers quite likes to play a style where he has some wide men, etc. there. And yeah. Unless there's a huge bid coming in, I think he'll be at Celtic next season as well. Um, backup wise, um, O is the backup to Furuhashi. Again, he's pretty capable. He's come in from the K League. He looks a, a personality and a talent. Um, and Dyson Maeda is a guy who can play either out and left or he can cover um, connection with the forward line side of things. Maeda is an interesting one because he's a guy where you don't know whether he'll fit in with how Rodgers wants to play. Now, obviously, you'll see scores here. He's not doing many high scores, but he, he is a really important guy to Celtic's team. Um, he's harassing the opposition. He's pressing. He's making things happen. He does have some really good games as well, but he has a lot of games where either maybe he started on the bench or he's not putting up a really good Soraya type score because he doesn't have a lot of the all around type action that you would get from the centre backs and Jota and some of the midfielders. Um, Maeda obviously had a good World Cup as well, um, and he was a real Ange guy. Ange loved him. So he may well stay on, but I think he's a guy where. Celtic could get seven or eight million for him. Maybe that would that would be the time to to move him on. Um, no personal strong opinion on him. I, I like him, but sometimes um, he goes through spells as well where you look he looks as if he's he's struggling a bit. Um, when Celtic play against teams who sit in and he doesn't have much space to work with. The last two guys to mention here are Syed Haksabanovic and Lyle Abada. Um, Haksbanovic first um, is a guy actually I like as well. He's still under 23s next season. And he could he's a guy who could improve under Rodgers. Um, he's not been playing as much. Um, but obviously, could he get a chance playing a bit more advanced in midfield? Could he maybe do that role and dovetail for O'Reilly instead of Aaron Moy? Um, if he wants to play from the left hand side, obviously that's really Jota's position. Um, but he definitely is a talented young player. He's got a bit about him, but he's been a mostly an impact player. But as I said, um, so he's not. I said earlier he's under twenty threes for next season. He's not. He's he's timed out. So under twenty threes until um, the the first of July two thousand twenty three. So. Again, loses that twenty three status, but if he does cement a team a position in Celtic's team, then you know he would be an important card. Leila Bada, last guy to have a look at before we, we sum things up. Again, a talented player. Um, some talk of a move away, which he's not really backed up as much with his own interviews, etc. A guy who's more sort of um does a score or or his scores are a bit sort of average. So you see he, he's got a lot of high scores in his locker. He scores goals. It's quite highly rated, um, but he does a lot of lower scores as well. And that's just his style. He, he's good at 
moving off the ball. He's good at coming on and scoring goals. Um, he's got pace, but he's he's still quite raw. He's still young. He's only twenty one. Um, I don't think he's ready for a move, say to the EPL, etc. Yet, but there is a lot of interest in him as well, and a lot of rumours. So that's that's a a walk through of the whole Celtic team just now. Obviously, from the point of view of Celtic, Celtic are one of the leading stacks on so rare. Um, maybe didn't perform as well as likes of Benfica, etc. Last season, but there were quite a few games where maybe. A daft goal has cost things, etc. And with Rogers coming in again, top manager, um, relatively similar style to Ange, you know, in a in possession playing a more of a three four three three type um, game. Um, so there's not a huge upset in terms of the squad saying, "Well, you're bringing in a guy who loves a target man," or you know. There's lots of similarities there, but what we'll have to wait and see is whether or not Rogers um, pays money to improve any of these positions, or whether or not Celtic lose one or two of those guys to a big bid. But certainly, there's a lot to look forward to in the new season. Celtic are in the Champions League. The Scottish League's back around about the start of August, and then we go again for more domestic success, hopefully. So. Hope everybody enjoyed the walkthrough. I know it doesn't always give you any definitive answers, but I think you we've got to keep an eye on who comes in and what happens at Celtic. Um, that'll be a developing thing through the summer. And then when we see who um, is there, we can do an update video later on in terms of um, who are the best sort of guys to have um, connection with the SO5 side of things. Thanks very much, guys.